Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you are having a good day today. Uh, as you know, with uh, the new developments, guys, uh, due to our, you know, this pandemic, uh, unfortunately, we are unable to conduct face-to-face -face, uh, lectures. So for now, we're just trying to catch up with some of the info so that we cannot lose a lot of time. As you uh, recognize, guys, you can see that our module, which is FEMA 212, has been loaded on VC lane. Traditionally, uh, this module was not on the VC lane. But due to unforeseen circumstances, that's why our module that's why uh, our module has been added so that we can be able to interact online okay guys as you know luckily for us we have uh, i think we've done a lot of work uh, as you can see now we are i'm currently on learning unit number six remember we just uh, did uh, learning unit number five which was the time value of money but don't worry we still have to go back and recap on what we did before so for today guys this is going to be a 15 to 20 minutes uh, video what we're going to do i'm just going to go through the theory uh, and this uh, will be accessed on the vc lane as i'll send you the link there after so that you can be able to know how to access i know this platform to us is a new platform but don't worry with time we're going to be able to know how does the platform works so this will be the theoretical part of it uh, and the calculation part of each session will be recorded in the uh, near future. Uh, this, as I said, this will be uploaded. And I will schedule a day where we are going to discuss. Because sometimes, you know, that if we go through the slides online, sometimes you can have some questions. Should we have any question, we're going to put it on what you call the discussion board. So I'm going to make sure that we interact there. If you've got any question, you send it there, guys. But I'm happy with our progress so far. Our test one went fairly well. Our ice tasks are on point. So I'm going to ask more wasting time, let's just quickly go through this study unit. As you can see here, this learning unit is enterprise financial management. Remember, as a business, you run a business on behalf of the stakeholders. Remember, we have the users of the financial statement. Why are we in business? Is because those stakeholders have got the interest in our business. So we need to make sure that whatever results we have on our business is reported to them. That's why it's very much important for you to be able to avail the information to the stakeholders so that they can be able to make decisions. Remember previously when we commenced with our uh, module earlier this year, we talked about the functions of the financial management. Remember those fun functions were uh, three pillars, if you know what I mean. We had uh, the investment function, which is the investment decision. We had the financial decision or finance decision. And we had operational or operations decisions. Remember, those were the main functions of the management. So those functions, at the end of the day, are incorporated in the financial statements. There's a statement called statement of cash flow. A statement of cash flow has got those three functions you will see as the time progresses. Now, obviously, when you report to the shareholders, so you need to have some intrusions that you need to have. Okay, so you must make sure that in your report, when you report to the stakeholders or the shareholders, make sure that you have got a letter to the shareholders outlining what the shareholders need to know. Okay, so the shareholders remember the interest in them. A letter to them talking about the current status of the business need to be part of what? Of that particular report. Okay, again, guys, for more information, you must go and consult the manual. Okay, 
again you need to have the following statements you need to have what you call the statement of comprehensive income sometimes you call it the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income this is formally known as the income statement remember this statement is used to check the financial performance of the business I repeat, we use this statement to check whether the business is performing or, or not. So for us to know whether the business is performing or not, we need to compare our incomes and our expenses. If the incomes are greater than the expenses, this would mean that we made a profit and the business is performing very well, okay? And, but if we are making a loss, it means expenses are more than the income. This means that we are running at a loss. That's why we need to check and check which expenses are higher and which uh, incomes need to be what improved. Okay. So the statement of com comprehensive income, in a nutshell, is to determine the performance of the business. Remember, if the business performs, if the business makes profit. This profit will put a business on a good financial statement uh, position. That's why the next statement is referred to here as the statement of financial position. We can only be in a good financial position if we perform during the year. So we need to make profit and that profit will uh, uh, improve our financial position. It's like you as an individual, if you don't work hard, it means your financial position won't be favorable at all. That's how we try to work hard to make sure that we improve our financial position. The statement of financial position is formally known as balance sheet. In the balance sheet is what we call what is where we determine what we call the solvency of the business. If I say the solvent, the business is solvent, it means my assets are more than what. My liabilities. So it means I can talk about the solvency. But you talk about the insolvency. It means our uh, total assets are less than our total liabilities. So that's why in the statement of financial position, you only find the assets, the liabilities, and the ownership. Okay. I hope everyone is following. Remember the two statements, the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position. These amounts which we put here, they can either be cash or non-cash. For example, if I buy an equipment for cash, so that equipment obviously must be under the statement of financial position. Even if I can buy it on credit, still that amount of my still come to the financial position so this statement whether it's non-cash or, or cash we will record in these two statements but thereafter remember we normally say cash is king if you don't have cash you are not going to be able to commit to most of the activities for example if varsity college wants to invest more in businesses let's say for example they want to acquire one of the schools here in south africa they need to have the real cash flow the actual cash flow for them to be a commit to that particular project they cannot commit by only expecting the income to be received maybe in two years. You cannot commit yourself because the cash will be received in the next two years. We commit because we've got cash on hand in order for us to be able to finance what? The products. That's why after compiling the above statements, which are comprehensive income and the financial position, we need to compile a statement called the statement of cash flow. This will only deal with the cash, meaning the inflow of cash and the outflow of cash. So it means the cash flow will tell us more about the liquidity of the business. It's going to tell us about the cash we have on hand because some of the cash was inflow and some of the cash was outflow. So the statement of cash flow will tell us how much cash do we have on hand. Now, 
The next statement is called the statement of changes in equity. Remember, when we see the word equity, we normally associate this word with capital. Remember, capital is a positive equity. Yes, remember from the, our uh, undergraduate, I can call it okay, the first year level, we talked about the capital. And capital was part of the equity. Remember, in terms of our, in, you know, the way we call it and our sports accounting, we normally call equity funds. Okay, so don't be confused with the word equity. The equity means what? Funds. But in this case, just think in terms of capital funds. We need capital to establish the business. So remember, by running a business, we have to contribute that capital. And that capital can be improved over time when we operate in business. Remember, we said under the statement of complaints in income, we either make profit or loss. That profit will affect the capital positively. But if we make loss, and that loss will affect capital negatively. So the statement of changes in equity in a nutshell is like the changes around capital. What changes capital? Capital is changed by the contributions during the period. Yes, we can end up increasing capital during the period. Sometimes we can decrease capital, which is very rare to decrease capital. The profit that we make also what? Increase capital. So the statement of changes in equity is just the changes of what? Of capital or of equity. Again, there are standards which we need to follow when we prepare all the financial statements. Now, as you can see here, we've got generally accepted accounting principle. These are the local principles which are used by a particular country. Uh, you know, because of this evolution of accounting, uh, in this, we don't talk about the accepted accounting principles anymore. We talk about the international financial reporting uh, standards, which is the IFRS. So, but for us, still in our syllabus, we still refer to as what? As the GAP. That means the local standards which we use to ensure uniformity in a particular country. Like USA, they still have their own US gap. But at the end of the day, with this gap must be aligned to the international accounting framework at the end of the day. So again, to ensure uniformity, that's why we are trying to come up with the standards or the principles which we must be able to have the uniformity when it comes to the financial statement. I hope everyone is following the moment. Okay. Let's move on. Oh, these are just the format, guys. You can even refer to your study guide. This is how the statement of comprehensive income look like. Remember, this I said is the same as the income statement, those who have been exposed to the accounting before. As you can see here, we have revenue. We need to remember revenue. The other term for revenue is called sales. So if I say sales, it means I call I mean what revenue. Sometimes I can call it turnover. It is the same thing. Why do we have to know these formats? Is because when they ask you to interpret the financial statements by uh, using ratios, you will see uh, at the later stage you're going to talk about the ratios. You need to know what to use. Okay. Out of that revenue or sales, we need to less cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is the same as the cost of sales. Okay, so it means we buy goods and we sell them. Okay, when we sell them, we've got sales. So when you say sales less cost of sales, we get what we call what the gross profit, meaning the gross profit is the difference between the revenue and the cost of sales. Okay, so meaning. The reason why we say gross revenue or gross in, uh, profit, it means this profit is not final. It's not net yet. We still have to add other incomes. We still have to uh, less operating expense. That's why thereafter we've got what we call plus other incomes. Remember, if you are running a business, yes, the, you know the main source of your income. For example, varsity college, the main income for varsity college is what? is the school fees from the student, okay? But Varsity College can be able to generate extra incomes. For example, maybe they can rent out some of their 
classrooms to the external parties, the amount which is being paid by those external parties will be under the other income because that, that is not their main income. It's like me as Sylvester, if let's say I run my own school, so the school fees from the business will be what? Uh, my uh, revenue, the main revenue. But if I do something on the side, maybe I'm selling uh, computers, maybe during my spare time, the income from those computers will be other income. Now we need to less what? The operating expenses. Uh, the operating expenses, we normally call them overheads. Remember, you cannot run a business without incurring expenses. Transport costs, insurance expenses, telephone expenses, you know, advertising expenses, salaries and wages, those are classified as what? Operating expenses. So when you take your gross in, uh, profit and you add your other incomes and your less operating expenses, we call this operating profit, normally known as EBIT. EBIT means earnings before interest and tax. Why do we call these operating profit? Is because it's the profit after we operate it. In other words, all those items which have been used, before, let's say above, like the other incomes and operating expenses, are within the business itself. But there are other expenses which are incurred not because we are operating. For example, we have got finance costs. The finance cost is the same as interest costs or interest expenses. So if you've got a loan which you acquired from the bank, the bank will charge you the interest. That interest is called finance cost. So can you see that interest was not incurred during the operations of the business? It was incurred because we acquired the loan from the bank. So that's why the interest expense or the finance cost cannot be part of what? Operating expenses. It is a standalone expense. So that's why it is uh, uh, put as a standalone account here. Now, when you take the operating profit and you less finance costs, you get profit before tax. Remember, some businesses are taxed. For example, if you've got a company, you need to pay the income tax. Okay? Uh, currently, companies are paying 28%. So, but if you're having a sole trader, you are not going to have what? Uh, to pay any income tax. So, in this case, this business of ours is paying tax. That's how we say profit before uh, tax. Now we must deduct the income tax itself and we get the net profit for the year. Okay. And thereafter, after that net profit for the year, you can have what you call the other comprehensive income. Uh, these are things which, uh, for example, if you've got any uh, building or land and then someone comes and independently review the buildings, for example, let's say I bought my building for five million and someone comes and reviewed it and then independent review and the, uh, let's say, reviewer says the amount, uh, the value is six million now. It means I gained uh, how much? One million. So that one million will be the other comprehensive income, for example. Okay. So again, that must be after tax. Okay. And thereafter, when you take your net profit for the period plus the other comprehensive income for the year, you will get the total comprehensive income for the year. Okay. So it means you need to know use this format because at the end of the day, you will be asked to calculate ratios based on the format. The next one uh, statement is called the statement of uh, financial position. Remember I said this is formally known as the balance sheet. Like I told you, we only record assets, owner securities and liabilities. Owner securities are the same as the funds. And as you can see, the first category is called assets. And assets have been divided into two. Remember when we did our first year, we talked about the assets. Assets are divided assets and the current assets. Remember the non-current means long term and then the current means uh, short term. So thereafter when you take non-current the current asset, you get the total asset. So again the 
information that must always know under the statement of financial position in order to assess it. Now, let's go to the next section. Still, we are under what? The statement of financial position. Equity and liabilities. Here we have got equity attributable to the owners. This means the capital that we made must come here. Uh, if you're having a company, obviously you can have the ordinary share capital because we sell shares. We can have what we call the retained income or retained earnings. So those will be the equity. And thereafter, you add them together, you get the total equity. And thereafter, you must have the non current liabilities. Remember, these are the long term liabilities, things like the mortgage loan, like the long term loans. And the same as short term liabilities, things like the bank overdraft, the trade payables, which are the same as the creditors control, SARS, things like that. Thereafter, you're going to have, if you add all that, you're going to have total liabilities, and thereafter, you add your. But the total liabilities you're going to have the total equity liabilities. The total equity and liabilities must always be the same statement of financial position must always balance. This means the total of the assets must be the same as the total equity and liabilities. This is like the account equation that we did the previous year. Assets equals Owner's equity plus liabilities. Remember the owner's equity, in our case, we call it what? Funds. I think everyone is following. Let's look at the statement of cash flow. Remember when I commenced this activity, I told you that the statement of cash flow has got the functions of the financial manager. As you can see, firstly, we deal with what? The operating activities that come from the operating activities. After we deal with the cash flow that comes from the investing activities and the, after the cash flow from financing activities. Remember, when we open we keep on making cash, cash will come under this section. When you talk about the cash flow from investing activities, it means we invest in assets. For example, we can go and buy a land and building, or we can sell land and building. It's all about the inflow and the outflow. Okay. When you talk about the cash flow from financing activities, how can we finance the business? We can either finance it by selling shares, or if you're uh, not in a position to be able to sell shares, we can go to the bank and acquire a loan. So that loan will be used to finance what? The business. So that cash will come under what? This section. So when you add these sections, three of them, one, two, three, remember it can either be a Or the cash received was more than the cash payment or not okay so all these totals uh, for each and every section there are three sections here when you add them together you either get a net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalent remember cash and cash equivalent means the cash that we have in the business the short-term cash the bank together with care, petty cash and the cash flow so it means when you add these three activities you either get a net increase, obviously an increase is when you find the positive figure here. If you get a negative figure, you get what? A decrease. This is similar to the cash flow statement that we did. Remember, not the cash flow statement, the cash budget. This is similar. And thereafter, you add what? The opening cash balance, and you get what? The closing cash balance. So again, guys, it's important for you to know the formats. Uh, the next statement is called the statement of changes in equity. Like I said, the equity, you can call it capital. So a capital can be affected by various things. In this, remember, we're here we're looking at the books of a company. That's why we have got the owner shares. So owner shares, why do we sell shares? Is because we want capital. So for example, here, we start at the beginning with the balance of capital. During the year, we can have what we call what the movements, meaning we can have we can sell more shares. Let's say we started with a uh, 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 shares of how much hundred thousand. We can sell more shares for twenty thousand. So now we've got hundred thousand plus twenty thousand, and we get the closing of how much hundred and twenty thousand. 
what is a general reserve a reserve for example is like during the course of the year a business can put money aside per month because they want to buy something in future or maybe they because of the unforeseen uh, future they are just putting money aside it's like you as an individual you can put five thousand aside every month so that in the case of emergencies you have got the money that you can use to remedy your situation okay so again the statement of change in equity as i said guys is like the movement around capital i hope everyone is following so this is what i just wanted to go through guys so please go through your um, study guide if it doesn't make sense guys i'm gonna schedule time on the vc land so that we can just uh, ask each other questions and discuss furthermore thank you very much guys for listening so soon uh, we're gonna talk about the calculations when it comes to this financial statement i hope that everyone is following and then thank you very much take care keep safe be indoors guys distance yourself soon we're gonna be back to business thank you very much i appreciate thank you